At the end of January, I attended the three inch forum meeting at the private building of Cor Ohms, also known for his crazy car collection. At the ground floor, there was a bunch of sellers, friends of Cor Ohms and the people that were invited to come some uh, sell some diecast there, I guess. First floor is uh, the stuff that uh, Cor Ohms sells. And then second floor is the diecast museum which are mostly Corvette cars. So let's start with what I found on the ground floor. This is a Majorette Porsche Turbo made in France. This was released in 1992 and was sold till 1994. These were the top chromes, as you can see, very nice and shiny paint job on these. I got this for a steal, only two euro from a uh, befriended Majorette seller. Very cool guy, always gives me great deals on stuff. White interior, proper steering wheel, all the good stuff, opening doors. Uh, no suspension on this, but as I've said many times before, I don't think the sports cars that uh, Majorette does should have suspension. It's got the uh, wheel tail in the back there. Awesome. Then we get to a uh, Fairly pricey one. This is a uh, old Siku. You can see that's got the V number here, made in Germany. It doesn't say West Germany, so I guess it's um, after 1989. The Ford Transit School Bus. So I've been after this one for a while. This is metal on metal. Uh, nice minty versions of this will set you back 40 to 50 euro and it is without the original packaging. Uh, so I knew I had to settle for one that uh, was not minty. And the seller was asking 10 euro for this one. So I thought, well, this is probably my one and only chance to get one that is reasonable condition for, uh, you know, uh, within my uh, price limit. So I grabbed it. Um, yeah, it is complete. Uh, Do doors are all working and uh, as you can see it's got some paint chips but uh, yeah it's in uh, all in all okay condition so glad to add this to the school bus collection then uh, from um, miniatureautowinkle.nl i found a few loose cars that were only one euro uh, this is a corgi juniors with wheels made in great britain ford holmes wrecker i had not seen this casting before or maybe not had paid attention to it but uh, as you can see condition is not great but you know it was only one euro and uh, this will be a place keeper for when i find a better version uh, you can see the plastic hooks have broken off so uh, at least um, i need to find a version that still has the hooks on it uh, if it uh, even if it's not mint, at least the hooks uh, need to be there. Uh, it still has all the stickers though. Auto rescue on the sides and on the this little uh, banner thing on top of the cabin. And the yellow light there. So yeah, I cleaned it up so that at least you can look at the yeah, clean vehicle, albeit uh, missing uh, some paint. Next up from a uh, same seller, this Matchbox made in England, Lesney Merry Merryweather fire engine. So this um, was first released in 1978 and used until 1979. Still has the stickers on the side. It's in great nick, um, but it's missing the white ladder on top. So that's why it was only one euro. But still good enough for me for the uh, fire engines matchbox video. Still from the same seller, also only one euro. This Majorette BMW X6. This is the first release from uh, 2010. Was used until 2011. And not, not not many colors that have been released of this one. Um, so yeah, very cool find. Got uh, some silver for the exhaust, got the BMW logo. And then in front uh, you get, uh, yeah, 
nicely tempoed up. Lots of details, of course, the lens, the lights, the suspension, and it's got opening doors. Kind of a metallic dark red. Some would call it burgundy, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice looking interior as always with Majorette. Then from another seller, I got this Lotus Esprit by Hot Wheels. This was a 2008 mainline in a uh, metal flake yellow. It's got the Lotus logo on the front and that's pretty much all you're getting. This is the uh, original tooling with the plastic spoiler on the back. Nowadays it has a metal spoiler. Um, I think I like it a little bit better with the metal spoiler, but still uh, nice casting. Uh, bigger wheels in the back are, you know, I uh, think most people would uh, prefer them have the same size wheels, but other than that, I uh, still think it's a pretty good casting. So. Another seller sold me this Majorette Mercedes 500 SL. This is the first release from 1991. It's in this strange goldish color. Two euro, as you can see from his sticker on the windscreen windshield. We got a pretty well detailed engine cover there. It has the Mercedes star on there and the Mercedes name, I believe. Uh, there were some premium versions of this that had the, uh, the letters all painted up so you could uh, read it better. And so metal on metal suspension. This, um, according to my info, this would still have been made in France, even though it doesn't say so. Uh, got uh, kind of a brownish interior, black steering wheel, and then the top of the dashboard is metal, and there's a uh, one piece with the uh, the windscreen windshield. Yeah, cool one. Unfortunately, it's got a little paint chip here. I thought it was mint when I bought it, but clearly I did not uh, check very well. And from another seller, I got a steal on this uh, Ford Transit wreck truck. Lesney 1979 was the first release of this. I got it for four euro and this thing is minty. Um, Produced till 1980 in this uh, particular version. Still has the hooks and everything. Yeah, everything's there. Everything's good looking. Uh, it's got a very tiny paint chip here on the A pillar, but it's hardly noticeable. So I, I cleaned it up big time because it was very smudgy. As I did with all the loose cars, I gave them all a wash. And uh, yeah, most came out pretty good. I have to say, very pleased with this. Then we get to the stuff I bought from Koch. First floor, this goofy one, the Flame Chopper, 2004 mainline. 2004, they released a whole bunch of weird stuff that they only released once because the collectors were so appalled by it so that they did not dare to release uh, another version of it. Uh, so we got this axe here that moves up and down. It's a fire engine, so uh, it was only one euro, so you know, it's not really expensive. I have a carded, carded version of this already, but I thought for one euro I'm going to take it. Flame chopper. And I got this Land Rover 90 by Matchbox for one euro and a half. Thought that was a good deal. This is the first release from 1987 and it was used in this uh, color and livery till 1988. Uh, the reason it's so cheap is probably because the roof has yellowed. Uh, it should be white and it looks more, well, yellow. Uh, but I don't really mind and actually it uh, goes very well with the, the tempo. Seems like uh, yeah. Exactly the same color here as uh, some of the tempo, so I don't mind at all. Got suspension, 
So the original uh, casting that says metal on metal with the plastic roof got retooled later on. Trailer hitch. Yeah. Nice one. Again. Then we get to the a uh, little bit more expensive stuff. Uh, the rest of them were all two and a half euro. Uh, this one actually says it on there, but not all of them do. Uh, this is the Mercedes-Benz Actros uh, 1857. I think that's uh, 18 tons, 500, 570 horse, if I'm not mistaken. This is the 2005 mainline release, so does not have been a lot. There haven't been a lot of releases of this casting, so I'm trying to get them all. Um, there's a few ones that will be impossible for me to get, uh, but you know, you never know what happens. So we got a chrome interior, and then this chrome part here uh, that wraps around. Well, not completely, not in the back, but front and sides. So it's part of the interior. A license plate and you know, all the headlights done and stuff. Very cool. But nothing else tempo wise, but that's okay. And it's really functional, so you can actually pull the trailer with that. Sweet. Then a casting I did not have yet the scissors truck. This was a um, 2000, from the year 2000, a five pack release. Ocean Dock five pack. Um, so yeah, kind of looks like a Ford truck to me. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, very interesting one. It's got opening doors in the back, but kind of hard to open. So this is a truck because it does this. Usually this is used at, at airports for uh, you know, delivering food and stuff to the uh, uh, airplane. Um, yeah, I uh, kind of forgot to take my thingy. To open up the doors because they're uh, yeah, a challenge to open. So I got my uh, my usual thingy here that I use for that, like that. You can see there's uh, not much going on inside, just some uh, posts. Click and then click like that. the ice cream truck generic or matchbox original one of the few versions with the clear window piece uh, let's see what's on the menu old-fashioned ice cream tasty sundaes and then uh, fruit bars and all kinds of stuff popsicles banana splits uh, ice Ice freeze, I don't know, and Sundays. Um, in the front, it kind of looks like a Fiat Multipla, definitely with the uh, the lights here at the bottom of the window piece, and it also kind of have has the Fiat logo in the back. So I thought that was kind of funny. Never noticed that before. I have one other example of this casting, and then you got uh, the the guy here, the ice cream seller, that. Uh, this appears when you close the door, but it's kind of hard to close the door completely. Uh, you can still see the the popsicle there or the uh, the ice cream. Twenty five cents. Yeah, cool. And a plastic door in the back that does not open. Air conditioner on top and stuff. Yeah, nicely detailed casting. And we get a bunch of fire trucks, fire engines. This is the uh, Dennis Sabre. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, the ice cream truck was from the uh, 2005 five pack City Services. Forgot to mention that. This is a kind of a special one. Um, I kind of he had a bunch of uh, fire engines, but at two and a half euro, you know, I don't want to go crazy on those. But um, I looked for special ones, so uh, I looked at the base and um, I looked for this particularly, Dinky. Um, that means that this is something special. This is a 2008 Euro edition. So get the uh, ladder that goes up. Uh, it does not swivel, just goes up and down. 
blue window piece. So we got the blue lights on top. It says Fire uh, on the side here. Uh, fire department in German. Dennis embossed in the cabin in the front. And the same on the other side. Here's the fire engine, as you can see, it also has Dinky on the base. This is the 2008 Stars of Cars version. Also has the ladder that goes up and does not swivel, so very similar casting to the Dennis. Um, no text on this one, just some uh, uh, numbers, but on this side it says Fire again. Interestingly, only on one side. So I'll put the two together so you can kind of see how uh, similar they are. Similar but not the same. See? And here we got another uh, goofy 2004 release. This is the Hot Head. Uh, this was uh, this is kind of a funny story. Um, at the end of the the event, at three in the afternoon, I was kind of the last person that was on the first floor. Uh, so I came into his office and uh, I said. The, I asked him, uh, there's a, a bunch of funny 2004 releases and I'm looking for the uh, the hothead. And he pointed at his display cabinet and, uh, and he said, um, could it be in there? So I looked and indeed it was in there in the display cabinet in his office. And uh, he let me have it for two and a half euro. Um, so that's a great deal actually because uh, I know one for sale carded um, that is seven and a half euros so I did not want to spend that so I'm glad I uh, I got this one this was probably the hardest one to find for the uh, Matchbox Fire Engines video and I now have uh, an example of every single Matchbox Fire Engine that they have ever released so uh, if I have time, I can do that video. So basically, it's kind of a weighty piece. It's got a good weight, so it's got the fire helmet on the on the roof of the cabin. It's a Matchbox original, obviously. Then we got this ambulance. Um, 2005 mainline. This was the first release, that's why I got it. Uh, what you see is white is all metal. And then the, the gray parts that you see here in front and on the side are part of the base and in the back. Um, and it's got a separate piece for the light bar. So yeah, because it's the first release, I thought, you know, you know what, I'll spend that two and a half euro on this. Not really worth it, but you know, it's the first release. The next one is definitely worth it at least to me. Uh, this is the flatbed truck. It says it right there above my thumb. Um, this was the uh, first, uh, no sorry, this is not the first release. This was a 2001 mainline. Um, first release was in yellow in the year 2000. And that was an USA exclusive, so I probably will not be able to get that one. But I have the other two releases of this with the light bar on top. Later on, it got retooled with a different bed and no light bar on top anymore. So I wanted to get um, yeah, as many of the original versions as I could. So I'm very pleased to, uh, to get this kind of a special uh, feature here on the back. So you pull this uh, bed. Uh, cover thingy and then the front part flattens uh, so you can put a longer vehicle on there and also it goes all the way in the back and then you can actually drive a vehicle on there so as you can see in the thumbnail of the video uh, the, the Lotus Esprit is on the back here driving onto the, uh, the flatbed so, yeah. a nifty construction but apparently too expensive to make because they retooled it uh, to uh, something more Easier to produce, I guess. A lot of metal on this, metal base, metal cabin. So just as a flatbed part is plastic. So nice weighty piece. 
Love it. Got uh, two carded uh, vehicles from that uh, that event. Uh, this is a Welly. Um, only one euro. Interestingly, uh, these were imported by uh, Simba Dicky, which is the parent company of Majorette, Shuko, Solido, and uh, some other brands. Kind of funny, they uh, imported these into Belgium. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, not under their own name, just um, under the Welly name. So they did some uh, import some die cast under the, uh, the Simba Dicky name in the in the past. But yeah, I just wish they still imported Welly here because they have become uh, almost impossible to find. Uh, yeah, this is a nice casting because this is one of the few that has a uh, lensed lights, not in the front but in the back so this is the BMW 120i generic uh, rims vinyl tires as usual with welly a nicely detailed front end some black paint in the grill there and then the headlights the kidneys and the BMW logo so that's all very nicely done Nice interior as always with welly. You get a proper steering wheel and a nicely detailed interior. And then when you come around the back, you can see the lens tail lights and the BMW logo. 120i badging there on the lift gate and the hatch and the base clips into the bumper. So no nasty post in there. Yeah, really a nice casting for the money. That's a steal. And the last carded item I got from this event was this Matchbox Convoy. I got this from uh, Bert van der A, a famous uh, Dutch collector. He was packing up when I came uh, downstairs to the ground floor from the first floor after uh, I um, had dealt uh, with the uh, core. And um, so I went to talk to him a little bit and he was packing up this one, putting this one in the box and I, was, I said, whoa, wait a minute, let me see that. And uh, yeah, take, took a look at it and he said, you know what, because it's the end of the event, you can have it for 10 instead of 12 and a half euro. And I said, sold. Uh, 2001 copyright, this is a 2002 release. Um, when Matchbox or Mattel was celebrating the Matchbox 50th anniversary, which was actually in 2003, not in 2002. So big boo-boo on their part. So let's take a look at this beauty. So uh, let's unhook it first. Take a look at the Scania rig. Scania T142, always a cool find, this Scania. It's got an, a chrome interior that also makes for the uh, smokestack in the back and the uh, air intake and the uh, kettle bar in the front, or whatever you call that. Um, so the centerpiece here in orange is metal and then uh, the centerpiece at the base is plastic it also makes for the fuel tanks uh, yeah very nice one and here's the trailer articulated trailer is it's it is called got the kind of the image from the cart the blister cards in those days had uh, this logo with this fire engine on there. Got the opening doors in the back. These should be easier to open than the ones from the scissor truck because they have these lips here. Click, click, and same deco on the other side. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, put that back in here. I don't know if this just pushes in there or not. Doesn't seem like, oh yeah, like that, just push it down. Yeah, definitely a beauty. Awesome. Okay. 
And I also got a shipment from Tom's Model Autos. He got he had this uh, Hot Wheels six pack for sale um, for a fairly good price. Twenty four ninety nine is kind of the MSRP according to Tom's, and he sold it for twelve ninety nine. So that's two euro and seventeen cents per car. A little bit more than I would usually pay, but you know what? Uh, I thought I like all these cars that are in here. Uh, let's grab it. So I have these. Um, and um, as a treat, we're also going to look at all the previous releases of these uh, cars. So here's uh, all of them in the back. Uh, this was a 2022 release. So I'm going to open this up. Put this in the background and then show you the um, let's see if we don't have too much glare no show you the previous releases of these don't have all of them but I have uh, well I would say most so the Jaguar F-Type Project 7 first release was in dark green. I don't have that one. That was 2015, but this is a 2016 release in red. In 2016, there was also a white one, Kmart exclusive. Don't have that, but I have the 2017 in black. 2018 was a, a light blue multipack exclusive. 2019, a uh, Spectre Flame Aqua Green Hot Wheels ID version. Don't have that one. I do have the 2020 release that was in a uh, Exotics 5-pack. Uh, sorry, that's this one. This is in the Exotics 5-pack, uh, the um, Dark Metal Flake Green one. So kind of similar. Uh, than the first release, but uh, different. The uh, first release was not, was not Metal Flake and uh, had uh, different wheels, I guess, and probably a slightly different tempo. Because as you can see, the first ones had the oval on the back, but then the later ones kind of lost the, uh, the oval on the back. This is also from the Exotics 5 pack, that's why I was confused, but from 2021, this candy apple red 2021 convertible set silver one and then this set 2022 this uh, flat black or matte black so same deco pretty much every time except for the the, the round hole in the back that disappeared Red interior, it's got a ugly steering wheel, which is a shame for a convertible. Project 7 there. Uh, by the way, the top four castings in this box here are all Ryu Asada castings. That is awesome. It's kind of a tribute to Ryu Asada, I guess. Then we get to the BMW M4, uh, first release. From 2015 in the Yas Marina Blue. I actually have all of the releases of this BMW. Uh, thankfully to the fact that uh, there was never an American exclusive. Yeah, this is a great casting together with the uh, RS5 Coupe and the Porsche, the, my favorites from the set. So that was 2015, also in 2015 recolored in this Metal Flake Vegas Gold. And not to be confused with the gold that is in there. Found 16 in Pearl Red. BMW sub-series in the main line. Recolored in white in that BMW set.
in 2017. We got it in this uh, dark blue. These are uh, American long cards, by the way. Those were the good days when we could get these at the uh, Kretvat. Beautiful color. And also from 2017, recolored in this light blue or steel blue. Also in 2017, a Forza set, this uh, kind of, I don't know, dark bluish, purplish, kind of hard to describe. So top deco, side deco, rear deco, but no front deco. Does get to be on the logo though. 2018, Gran Turismo set in white. No front and rear tempo, just sides and top performance safety car and then we got the 2022 so there's a four year gap of this beautiful casting so we got the front deco we got the top deco and we got the rear deco i'll show you the uh, vegas gold so you can see it's actually fairly different Then we get to the Audi RS5 Coupe. First release in red in 2019. Rear deco, fully done up with license plate. Also in 2019, a Zamek version, courtesy of Sir J David Johns of Twice Diecast, who got uh, me this one. Sweet. 2020 in the blue. Beautiful. 2020 in black. So the recolor. Then in 2021, it was in white, a multi-pack exclusive. Don't have that one. I do have the 2022 multi-pack exclusive version in this uh, nice red. So it's been in red twice, but you know, definitely two totally different reds. And then we got the new version here, 2022 in green. Yeah, nice one. Then we get to the Mercedes AMG GT. So 2015 model, but the first release was in 2017. This uh, metallic yellow. This one is uh, kind of hit or miss with the headlights. Uh, because of the pe peculiar shape of the headlights, it was kind of hard to replicate in the uh, diecast form. But you know, all in all, I think they did uh, quite a good job on it. So, that was front and back. I'm not sure if the Mercedes badge is a top tempo or not. Recolored in this uh, metal flake dark orange. Mm, very nice color. Two thousand eighteen in the metal flake black. Unfortunately, with a blue window piece, that makes it look pretty goofy. 
and recolored in uh, lime green without the blue window piece much better and also in 2018 it was in white target red edition again courtesy of sir david johns of twice diecast so we 2019, this metallic dark gray without clear coat. Said uh, Fast and Furious on the card. No taillight tempo, just to go faster stripes and then the front deco. 2019 also, it was uh, in the Hot Wheels ID in the Spectra Flame dark gray. Don't have that one. Then in 2020, we get the uh, same deco as in uh, 2019 uh, in a uh, Fast and Furious set, but this, this time with the clear coat. And then we get uh, 2022, this uh, nice blue. We do get a stripe on top, but no tail lights. That's a bummer. Would have preferred the tail lights and not have the silver stripe on top, but hey. This is what it is. We get to the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, the 2016 model. This is the first release from 2016 in lava orange, or uh, as some of you would say, probably a red. So Porsche badge. And then GTR badge in the back. And that's all it gets tempo wise, but it does have the lens headlights, part of the window piece. That is sweet. Birch green recolor that same year. This one does get uh, a lot. Sorry, next year, 2017. Um, so we get the Porsche logo with the black stripe. We get the GT3 RS on the side. Uh, nothing on the back here, but we do get the portion name on the wing and black on the side so all in all a little bit more detailed but then in 2018 in white uh, it lost all those details again although it did have the black stripe underneath the logo still and the Hot Wheels logo on the license plate then and now series was also in a Zamek version 2018 and then and now series don't have that one 2019 in Metal Flake Purple. Uh, this was also a super treasure hunt uh, that same year. Twenty twenty. Flat black. Tanner Fox livery. His car. Quite a lot of tampos on this one. 2021 Factory 500 set, yellow version, similar to the green one, the birch green one we saw earlier, tempo wise. 2021 in green, Hot Wheels Premium Forza, don't have that one. Hot Wheels ID in 2021, Spectre Flame Birch Green, don't have that one either. 2022, this version, silver. Porsche logo, red stripe only on the frunk, not on the roof. That's kind of a pity. So let's get the GT3 RS on the side, Porsche name, black paint on the side, and even the GT3 RS on the back. So pretty well endowed in the tempo department on this one. Should not be complaining, really. What is that stuff here? Is that glue or something? No, I think there's something in the paint. Oh, well. And 2023, we get a multi-pack exclusive in shark blue. Don't have that one yet. I hope to get it someday. Then we get to the Renault Alpine A110. First release in 2019 in this nice blue with the deco in the front and in the rear, which totally does it justice because this is really a beautiful car in real life. And uh, so is this model was uh, 
2020, it also came in blue in the, this livery. I don't have it. This is the recolor in silver in the, that same livery. I'm not a huge fan of the livery. I um, guess it's a real existing livery, but in my opinion, this car needs the uh, the front and rear deco to uh, yeah, to honor it. Um, here's the 2022 version from the set in white. We get a little bit more tempos than the silver one here on top, but uh, still would have preferred just the deco in the back. And um, there was also a premium version in 2022. Don't have that one either. So let's get rid of the garbage here. And the rest of the shipment from Tom was uh, premium stuff. I got this Bentley Flying Spur in a Verdant. That's the name of the color for uh, 9 euro 99 cents instead of 11.99, just because uh, there's no plastic wrapper on the box. That's the sole reason why I uh, got it uh, cheaper. Uh, yeah, I'll take all of them without a wrapper then. I'm very pleased that I have managed to uh, get this vehicle. So we got the metal base, rubber tires, authentic rims. Look at those rims. Those are huge and they are so nicely done. Wow. Mini GT definitely does a nice rim. Of course, lens lights front and back, Bentley on the license plate and on the uh, boot. And the Bentley logo there, also on there. Soft mirrors, panoramic glass roof. It's a little bit smudgy. And then we got the, uh, the four lens lights in the front. Black grill, and again, Bentley logo there. There's a little bit of a glue residue here on the thing. Uh, oh, and there goes the uh, mirror. Oh, she's Yeah, I'll have to fix that. Uh, maybe I can uh, squeeze it in there for now. Usually these mirrors are, yeah, there you go, somehow. Um, these plastic mirrors, soft plastic mirrors are a pain to reattach. Uh, because, uh, well, hard plastic is easier to stick in there to make it stay. Then, this is the cheapest one of the bunch. Atomic Works. MSRP $18.99 according to Tom's. Uh, they sell them for $11.99. I got this for $7.99 because the acrylic case is broken. Other than that, Shouldn't be anything uh, wrong with it. So let's uh, see, I have to cut this. I can just um, open it up like this. Yes, I can. There you go. Slide it out. Let's see if we're going to have a lot of uh, mayhem with this acrylic case falling apart or not. No, it stays in one piece. That's okay. So this is the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10 Pikes Peak safety car. So yeah, Tomac works for eight euro. Not going to pass that up. Plastic base on these, nicely detailed exhaust system, of course rubber tires and uh, authentic rims. There's some brake discs behind the wheels and calipers too. I don't know if you will be able to pick that up, but uh, they are there. And they don't turn with the wheels, so 
That's cool. They are fixed. Got the separate piece for the light bar on top. Little antenna there that I will not touch. And slides front and back, obviously. Lots of details, tamper wise. One of the reasons why these are so uh, expensive. Reflective sticker on the side mirrors. And right hand drive. Cool. Yeah, nice one. Very pleased with it. Then we get to some uh, green light celebrating the 80th anniversary of Jeep. 1991 Jeep Cherokee 2022 release and production. Of course, metal on metal, pretty high number, 4,445. This is a really nice version. I like the, the gray cladding on the side. A very uh, period correct, I would say. And uh, nice trim details on the side too. On the front, look at that. Very nicely done front end there. Cool. Really nice. A hobby Shop Series 14. The 1971 Volkswagen Type 181. The thing with surfboards. These used to be a little bit cheaper, but as you can see, nine euro and nineteen cents. Oh, yikes! They're getting up there. Twenty twenty two release also, and also twenty twenty two production. Is the other vehicles in the set? Freeze the frame if you want to see what else is in there. All right, let's pop out these surfboards and. Uh, Throw them in the back and uh, hopefully they will stay. 981 serial number on this, metal on metal. And we get a colored base, that's interesting. And I, uh, as I uh, mentioned in previous video, this uh, these wheel arches are a metal part of the base. Yeah. That's why they have to color the base. The thing tampoed on the side. And they got a lot of different versions. I mean, with uh, different contraptions on the on the open space here. So it's interesting to see. The uh, sun visors are painted black. That's a nice touch. And uh, this um, soft top construction actually looks a little bit detailed. Oh yeah, and uh, I believe the. Uh, well, I know the engine cover in the back opens up. Um, there we go. Does it go up higher? No, that's all it does. So let's see. I can show you. Yeah, got some uh, detail for the engine there. You can see some silver. And uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I got the dog dish hubcaps. Nice one. Love the orange, very period correct also. Then I got a few hobby exclusives. This uh, Ford Escort RS Cosworth, which uh, surprisingly was cheaper than the, uh, the previous ones. Also 2022 release and production. Very cool casting. This has a sticker on there, serial number 2438. Cool rims. This is one of the few 
green light castings that has lens headlights. Fortunately, they did not bother to paint the uh, the body behind the lens lights silver. That would have looked much better if they had done that. This one, the, uh, the bonnet opens up. Let's see if we can uh, squeeze that open. Yep, there you go. So we get a nicely detailed engine block there with uh, a lot of silver paint and some black paint for the, uh, the cover on top. Cool. Right hand drive, some silver for the side mirrors. Very nicely done spoiler on the back or wing, I should say. Painted tail lights. Yeah. Awesome. And I also got the white one. Usually I'm not a fan of white, but you know, with this one, I just had to get it. Nine hundred and seventy-four. Basically, same vehicle. Uh, with it being white, the headlights actually look a little bit better. Engine detail will be the same, I'm sure. Yeah. And then I got uh, a casting that is new to my collection. 1982 Mazda RX-7 by Johnny Lightning. I don't buy a lot of Johnny Lightning, but uh, since they have uh, been releasing some true 164 scale castings, I am definitely uh, interesting in acquiring some. Nine euro and 99 cents is just at the edge of my uh, spending limits for a diecast car. They had, I believe, four different uh, versions. I was really tempted with the gold one. Uh, much less with the black one, and I can't remember what the fourth color was. Uh, here's some classic facts if you want to read those. Freeze the frame. Sunrise red is this color. Thought that was very uh, you know, appropriate for this vehicle. 12,480. That is quite a lot. Uh, this is 2022. Copyright. Metal on metal, production date February 23 of 2022, so that's more than a year ago. Really cool looking authentic rims, of course with the rubber tires. I got a tan interior with a very good looking steering wheel, that looks awesome. Some silver for the side mirrors. Mazda batching there. Probably says RX-7 on the side there. Above my thumb. I'm not sure what this says here. Above my thumb. No, I can't read that. Maybe on a bigger screen. Got a uh, license plate that says a uh, Wankel. Um, rotary. Our uh, English speaking friends say, but the, uh, as Europeans, we say Wankel engine, the type of engine with a, a rotor and the rotary engine. Um, some points of criticism the taillights look a bit toyish, but then again. Johnny Lightning started as a toy brand, so kind of a competitor to Hot Wheels, so can't really fault them for that. And, uh, you know, if they made them a little bit darker, it would look probably too much like an auto world. Also, the uh, defroster lines I really could do without. It's not realistic looking. I do like the RX-7 there, 
and just beneath the black painted wiper on the back. Also like the hinges of the, the back door, the hatch, lift gate. Um, the seats are too much forward. Uh, anyone sitting there would almost get crushed against the steering wheel. So should be a little bit more to the back. Not all the way to the back. I know it's a coupe. So you got bigger doors to uh, easy access in the rear seats. But uh, halfway the door, that is not realistic looking. Um, let's see under the hood or bonnet, if I can open it. Uh, it probably opens the other way around. Yeah, dummy. Okay, got a blue frying pan there. The air filter. The rest of the engine is black. But that's a nice detail. Love it. Oh yeah, and it should say here, uh, I learned that from watching Joe, XLT Offroad Bear on YouTube, 164 meaning it's a true 164 scale casting. Yeah, all in all, I'm very pleased with it. I was tempted to get more uh, versions like the gold one, but you know, uh, maybe one day, who knows, if I go, go crazy Broadway style. Let's tilt you guys down a bit so you can get a better look at the parking lot. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.